hello guys this is wits lounge learning made easy and in today's video we are going to be considering a very important concept for those of you that are writing work in nigeria and in ghana and in our west african countries it's important you take note of this we're going to be considering um the wire practical on volumetric analysis so this is like a revision class to help you understand how to go about this particular thing now the tentative white paper has shown some materials that should be acquired by schools for this practical and from these things we have seen we are going to be discussing um certain questions that are likely to come out so with that said let's delve into the study now the very first thing i would like to say about this is that it's important to take work practical very serious because it takes it has about 35 25 to 35 percent of the total mark you have for your chemistry y exam now having said this we would now discuss some important things that are relevant to volumetric analysis if you hear the term volumetric analysis it involves an aqueous solution so when you are reacting different substances in an aqueous solution basically what you are trying to do or you're analyzing them is volumetric analysis with that emphasized and said there are important things that must be noted before we get into solving questions the first thing that you should take note of is the term concentration so whenever i say concentration generally speaking concentration is simply defined as the amount of solute divided by the amount of solvent so generally it's more or less the amount of solute found in the given amount of solvent so when you are asked to mathematically express concentration it is simply solute over solvent having established this particular fact we move ahead to understand how it affects volumetric analysis now there are two major forms of concentration that you must pay attention to whenever you are dealing with volumetric analysis we'll start with the first one molar concentration so when we say molar concentration what do we actually mean molar concentration is simply um described as the concentration of a substance in mopa dmq that is molar concentration the concentration of a substance in mopa dmq which means mathematically molar concentration is expressed as number of moles of solutes all over volume in dm cube of solvent so just have that in mind that when you talk about molar concentration this is the general problem or equation for solving it uh the si unit of molar concentration as i mentioned is mole per dm cube so in some cases you will not see find the molar concentration some of the questions you will see you will see find the mole the concentration in mole per dm cube when you see that it's the same thing as molar concentration now the unit for molar concentration is mole per dm cube or molarity or capital m any one of these three things are a representation of the molar concentration now having established this fact um i would like us to also understand that molar concentration is represented by a symbol c capital c so once you see capital c is actually a representation of molar concentration which is measured in mole per dmq okay i think that's one of the most important things now there are many ways to resolve or find the molar concentration of substances and that is one thing i'm going to be establishing in this class let's look at the four different formulas that we should consider whenever we are asked to find molar concentration there are more anyway but let's look at these ones for now the first formula you consider in finding molar concentration is when they ask you to find the molar concentration of a substance and your solute is in moles represented by n while your solvent is a volume in dmq so you simply use this to solve this meaning that molar concentration will be number of moles divided by volume in dmq so if you have a question and they say two moles of a particular a is a solution containing two moles of hcl in two dm cube of water what you simply do is two moles divided by two dm cube and you have that your answer is going to be one mole per dm cube so just have this that this is the first formula for finding molar concentration the second formula for finding molar concentration is c in mole per dm cube equals 
number of moles multiplied by 1000 all over volume in cm cube this is actually a scenario where instead of giving you the volume in dm cube the volume is now given in cm cube and you have the third formula which is also a formula for molar concentration expressed as mass over molar mass times one over volume in dm cube what does this mean in a situation where you are not giving your amount in moles but it's given in mass what do you do to get the molar concentration mass over molar mass times one over volume in dm cube and then finally you have that molar concentration in mole per dm cube is equals mass over molar mass times 1000 all over volume in cm cube so it's important take note of these four major formulas because we are going to be applying them as we go further in this study so when they say find the concentration in mole per dm cube think of these four formulas anyone that suits it or suits or coincides with the values you are giving is what you're supposed to use in that case so just have that in mind there are others we are going to be taking them step by step the second form of concentration that is important for you to note is mass concentration mass concentration now it is related to molar concentration but it is simply expressed as the concentration of a substance in gram per dm cube so when you are asked for mass concentration it simply means find the concentration in gram per dm cube and what is it totally or uh, mathematically expressed as mass of solute all over volume of solvent in dm cube now if you don't use this the other way to find the mass concentration is giving us mass of solute times 1000 all over volume in cm cube so it's important to take note of this that mass conch is expressed as the mass conch is simply expressed as the concentration in gram per dm cube so if they give you a mass and give you a volume simply divide it and you get the mass conch if you are giving a mass and the volume is in cm cube you need to do mass times 1000 all over volume in cm cube as i said we are going to be applying questions today so don't be in a hurry now having said this the next important thing i think it's 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 very prevalent we know is how to relate mass concentration and molar concentration because yes there should be a relationship between the two of them so what is the mathematical expression that directly relates these things and that mathematical expression is simply giving us mass concentration which is measured in gram per dm cube equals molar concentration which is measured in mole per dm cube multiplied by molar mass which is measured in gram per mole so have this in mind that anytime you are asked to find mass concentration simply do molar concentration times molar mass so in a case where you are not given the mass necessarily uh and you have the molar mass of the substance and the molar conch what do you simply do molar conch times molar mass to give us mass conch which invariably if we make molar conch subject of formula it means that anytime we are now looking for the molar concentration which is the concentration in mole per dm cube what do we simply need to do making the subject of formula will now have mass concentration all over molar mass then finally situations could occur or questions could come up we'll see one of them here where you will not be necessarily given the molar mass that is you will not be given the individual atomic masses or values generally to add and find the molar mass which means that you should solve it using this formula how would you now find the molar mass once you are asked to find the molar mass and you cannot find it by the conventional way um what you should simply do is mass concentration divided by molar concentration now if you look at this thing it actually makes sense you just simply make it subject of formula anyone you make subject of formula actually gives us a new mathematical expression for our study so take note of these things we are going to be applying these things that's why i'm actually um talking about them before we get into questions okay now having said this um i will now talk about uh one final um formula and then um, we will now get into solving now the final formula i'm going to talk about is the formula that relates uh it relates molar concentration of reacting 
and that's not reacting of reacting substances in aqueous so oh that's the wrong spelling of aqueous let's get that correctly in aqueous solutions to their volumes so once i'm relating the molar concentrations of reactive substances in aqueous solutions to their volumes the mathematical expression used for that <clears throat> how i pronounce it is quite funny but then that's one way to i used to remember it it is referred to as in my own terms as kava na all over sebo vobo mbo this doesn't make so much sense but just have this in mind it's simply cava equals na all over cbvb equals nb i'm just trying to put in that nigerian vibe there you know the kavana all over sebo vobo mbo this is basically one way to remember it for those of you that might have issues with remembering this thing in the home this has helped me it can also help you so kavana all over sebo vobo mbo is just one way to express and what are we establishing here the relationship between the molar concentrations and their volumes so have that in mind now we are going to be understanding these parameters because if you don't understand it and you apply you are likely to have a doldrum of confusion when you are solving i would like to start with the first guy here when we see ca what does it mean it simply means molar concentration of solution a so when i'm asked to find the molar concentration of solution a or maybe i'm relating it to solution b um the ca here is simply representing the molar concentration of solution a which is the concentration in mole per dm cube okay then we have um cb cb is basically the molar concentration of solution b then we move ahead to the next thing va now when we say va with respect to this formula va is the reacting or titrated volume of a it's not just any volume you see in the reaction it's the one that is titrating so when you look at a question for instance if you consider a question and they say put a into a burette and titrate it with you you heard titrate it with so which means any value we get from the burette is our v of a that is if a is added to the burette you get what i'm saying so have this in mind that the titrated volume not necessarily the volume of the solution, but the one that is titrated or reacting is VA. Same way, VB is also referred to as the reacting or titrated volume of B. So when you consider that, you have that. Then finally, we have NA and NB. NA is simply the number of moles of A in a balanced equation. So, which means that before we get to find Na, we need to balance the equation. And any number of moles we get from there uh, in a balanced equation is our Na, which means Nb is going to be the number of moles of B in a balanced equation. Okay, now, why I'm literally explaining these things is they could be confusing terms. When you're asked to find the number of moles in a solution, you're not expected to use this. You get so this is not the number of moles in a solution this is simply the number of moles in a balanced equation okay so that is that generally about this before i leave this and we get to solve a question i would like to see finally talk about dilution principle now dilution principle simply has to do with a scenario where the solution the solution um basically changes concentration by adding more water uh it's simple the principle is given as uh c initial v initial equals c final v final in my own term on my own word i just call it psi vi equals sifo vufo anyway just have that in mind that this is the molar concentration initially times the initial volume equals the final concentration times the final volume so once there is a change in concentration and you are expected to relate them this is what to use okay so at this point i think we have gotten to a point where we can now solve a question